nurses is that uh, we nurses working in different services in the hospital, especially in the acute stroke services, have a wide range role, which includes assessment, identification, and monitoring, as well as monitoring with the complications of the diseases, and as well as involvement in the rehabilitation, psychological support, and even the end of life care. We nurses, especially working in acute stroke services, should remember the phrase, time is free, because a stroke is a neurologic emergency that needs to be addressed right away. Nursing interventions for this are paramount importance for optimal patient outcomes, but hand in hand with the medical interventions that our medical team is giving us. Now, for our nursing leaders who are attending this session, we were responsible for ensuring that our staff members participate in any evidence-based practice and maintain compliance with a widely established national guidelines that govern stroke patient care standards. So the members of the stroke team are presented on this slide. So we have uh, the core members of the stroke team, which involves, of course, the stroke nurses or even uh, staff nurse. With supporting members, which is represented, which are represented in blue colors, and administrative support, which represented on green, which are required for uh, those centers acquiring a stroke program certification. So, in the stroke care continuum, which I think was discussed in the earlier session, we as nurses have different responsibilities. So, for community education, primordial prevention, and primary prevention, we are tasked to promote stroke education put emphasis on our patients about risk factor control and attend designation and training for acute stroke ready hospitals and of course formulate and be part in the identification of stroke team members. For EMS response, the primary goal will be stroke recognition and rapid transfer. In, in the Philippine setting, EMS is not just an EMS provider but it could be a nurse who are working in the EMS area so we need to know about stroke recognition and, rap and expediting rapid transfer to a stroke ready hospital. Acute stroke treatment as the, and will be the focus of this uh, session. Secondary stroke prevention and stroke rehabilitation as well so inulit lang po and inulit emphasize the stroke patient education as well as risk factor workup and control because this is the time that the patient is still admitted in our care while they have to be put on emphasis as well when they go back to their community so there's a strict, stringent risk factor control for our patients to prevent another recurrence of stroke and of course the continuous quality improvement so as nurses it's not just uh, the patient care that we should be involved but be involved as well with the different uh, quality improvement that our stroke unit for the benefit of our stroke patients. So the pre-hospital care is that we have to ensure that there is a rapid evaluation and rapid recognition of the stroke symptoms. We need to evaluate the, the patient's onset of time of symptoms, obtain baseline glucose and insert IV lines. Some uh, hospitals, some centers have partnership with their EMS services so that they will recognize or uh, accept the results that the EMS are getting from the patient in the field so that they will not uh, they will not do it again when the patient arrives in the ED. There should be always early stabilization so we have to support cardiopulmonary system provide oxygen if needed and of course perform neurologic evaluation this can be done through the BFAST assessment and of course our EMS or the field uh, team should be tied to a rapid uh, transfer for hospitalization and triage to a stroke ready hospital now when triaging these patients we have to perform advanced not notification so uh, inform our receiving stroke team in ED or in that stroke ready hospital and inform that the patient is arriving in ED, a note of the time of the onset of stroke and of course uh, tell us also the, the estimated time of arrival for the patient, of the patient. When the patient arrives in your ED, you have to perform these things. It's not a sequencing of events, but it should be performed simultaneously, maybe from uh, with a nurse one and nurse two, or even uh, paired with the resident or the 
ED consulta. So you have to perform uh, pre-hospital groups if not yet done, especially the identification of stroke symptoms, secure ADCs, and rapid triage and assessment. And you have to expedite the stroke process as well. If you have an in-hospital stroke code, you may activate it to activate your stroke neurologist and the rest of the stroke team. Activating the stroke code is not just to activate your neurologist, but to activate the different uh, departments involved in the stroke program. So this involves activating the um, new imaging department so that they will, uh, they will pull up uh, or they have a unit ready to receive for that suspected stroke patient for uh, the direction to the new imaging. Of course, obtain the, uh, the type of issues, insert ID line, obtain this uh, blood parameters or blood samples. If you have a point of care uh, machine in your ED department that could get this one the better but uh, uh, I think there are two hospitals who have a point of care machine with uh, having to release results within two to five minutes with regards to many parameters of PT, PPT and IMR. Position the patient appropriately, oxygenate if needed and book to arch of monitor if applicable and then perform stroke assessment using the NIHSS. But some hospitals, uh, when they have an acute stroke team, the performing of stroke assessment using the NIHSS is being done by either a, a trained stroke nurse or even the stroke fellow or the neuro neurology resident. So the NIHSS, this is the National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale, which is a systematic assessment tool that provides a quantitative measure to, to quantify the neurologic deficit. It is a tool which is being used worldwide and can be performed in less than two minutes. It is better you have a form para hindi siya makalimutan, but it is also advisable during the, the emergency phase na memorize mo yung, yung tool na ito. It is an 11 item tool which can cover uh, and level of consciousness, vision, motor, sensory, language, and speech. So this is categorized as as this one. So the lowest score is at zero, which the patient might have that might not be having a stroke symptoms based on the tool. But it doesn't mean that the patient who is who has the score of zero doesn't mean that the patient does not have a stroke. It might mean that their symptoms presented in the ED is not quantifiable using the national or the NIHSS. A score of 1 to 4 is categorized as minor and so on up to severe. Okay, this is designed to be a simple, valid, and reliable tool can be administered at bedside consistently by physicians, nurses, or therapists. And uh, everyone is uh, encouraged to perform this one because it is a common language that is used by the members of the healthcare team to uh, to use as a communicative neurologic system, neurologic scoring system for our stroke patients. So these are the eleven categories, but we will not discuss this one here. Yet. But we are promoting that every member of the stroke team is required to be certified to be able to conduct the NIHSS. The training can be performed or can be done on using this website. You can log on, it's free, and uh, once you have your account here, you can have a practice session and uh, video lectures with the training campus, and then you'll be able to know the scoring mechanism of each category as well. Okay, and once you are certified to have this NIHSS, it, the certification is good for two years. Okay. So next would be in the ED is of course, once we prepare the patient, uh, we identify that the patient is suspected of having a stroke, we safely transport the patient to the CT scan or MRI as indicated by our doctor. Pre-alert the radiology technician about the stroke patient arrival, either in the CT or MRI, for them to have a scanner ready. Ensure that the target parameters are met depending on the type of stroke, and this was discussed earlier in the other modules. I just want to highlight that pre rtpa is 
the target parameters is having a systolic blood pressure of 185 over a diastolic blood pressure of 110 and it changes after administration to weight by 5 millimeters virtue. Now, as nurses, I want to highlight this one. We have different uh, nursing care for patients who are receiving thrombolysis before and after. So make sure before giving the thrombolysis, you have a patent ID line. And we encourage that uh, the patient should have two patent ID lines. Why? Because the, the patient might be needing other intravenous medications during the course of your acute treatment. And uh, one line should be focused to the main line, which is the pain NSS, pain NSS. And the second line should be dedicated solely to the uh, RTPA medication because most of the IV medications are not compatible with our RTPA. Administer the RTPA using infusion pump, but not the uh, bonus part. The bonus part should be given with uh, IV bolus and slow IV push for one to two minutes. Ensure NGP and poly catheter is inserted when deep necessary. Not all stroke patients are required to be inserted with these catheters. We still have to assess the uh, or we, we still have to assess and have it on case to case basis. Put the patient on MPO, but not all patients uh, will have to be put on MPO for the whole hospital duration. We have to perform swallow screening first before we uh, we give any oral intake for the patient. And strictly monitor blood pressure as indicated to the prior slide. Watch out for signs of deterioration and signs of deterioration not indicated in the NIHSS, especially those symptoms uh, such as bleeding symptoms, example of which is the, uh, an onset of headache, which is not present in the baseline assessment in the AD. Right after giving the bolus medication of RTPA, you have to strictly monitor the bleed for the first 24 hours after starting the treatment, which in which the target should be uh, strictly followed and documented for the vital signs every 15 minutes for two hours after starting and every 30 minutes for the six hours and every hour throughout the stay in the ICU. And remember, every uh, every BP searches should be reported right away to the neurology consultant or your physician. If ever our stroke patient uh, underwent an endovascular uh, therapy for it and for advanced reperfusion techniques, our nursing interventions would include checking the site, the operative site for bleeding could be either presented with gross bleeding or hematoma. The hematoma in the first few hours will appear as greenish, so that's why we have to observe that, that area. And then we have to, to report it immediately to our endovascular physician. Access, of course, for distal pulses because uh, absence of distal pulses after the procedure would mean that something is blocking in the blood vessels of our leg. Position the patient flat on bed for six to eight hours. Apply a sandbag directly on the side, but the, sand, the sandbag uh, depends on the closure device that the endovascular uh, specialists have uh, put to our patient. So this one is a traditional uh, method, but uh, newer closure devices does not require applying sandbag. But with this uh, intervention, we have to coordinate with our endovascular specialists. And of course, do not move the leg with the punctured side because the, the, there might be other complications when we move the, the affected leg. Maintain an NPO for six to eight hours and after the end of the NPO status, we still have to assess our patient for a swallow screen. For hemorrhagic stroke, specific nursing intervention would include uh, strict blood pressure control as indicated and when our hemorrhagic patient arrives in our care and with BP surges, we have to strictly control the blood pressure within the hour. So this one is not solely for the nursing actions, but this should be uh, uh, collaborated with other members of the medical team because uh, they don't want to order the medications. So as nurses, if the medication is, uh, is not helping with the control, 
we have to discuss uh, other options to our doctors. Maybe our doctors will add another uh, medications to control the blood pressure. So it goes hand in hand with the medical food. We also have to correct the body of fatigue and our target with this is an INR so that's less than that's less than 1.4. Reversal agents as indicated earlier to the, to the previous session, if the hemorrhagic culprit is associated with anticoagulant. Of course, ensure neurologic neurosurgical referral. Strict pain control, so our target for our hemorrhagic stroke patients should be uh, no headache or no pain at all. Recognize your nation's syndromes. So these are, again, uh, signs of headache, signs of uh, increase in blood pressure, or what we call the triad symptoms with the Cushing syndrome. So we have to report it immediately to our uh, consultants. Manage increased intracranial pressure. So these are uh, the stated nursing interventions. Now, specific for subretinal hemorrhage, in addition to that of the hemorrhagic stroke nursing interventions, we should adopt a unit protocol for patients who are diagnosed with subretinal hemorrhage, especially those patients who, who, whose aneurysms are not yet secured. So we have to be silent in the patient's room, maximize the patient's comfort, and allow the patient to rest, and make sure no visitors are allowed because uh, the presence of visitors will create a certain degree of uh, stress to our uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage patient. Minimize stimulation. It is advisable for all members of the stroke team, not just the stroke team, but the members of the healthcare team. Why? Because stimulation can can have a sort of uh, putting a stress, which can lead to a which can lead to an increase in blood pressure to our stroke patient. Being the light, because most of the subarachnoid cases are photophobic, and again, manage headache. Aim for a pain score of zero, and you may consult our doctors if they want, would want to give a uh, pain a medications to address this one. Advise patients to avoid straining, of course, because it will lead to increase in blood pressure and as well as the salva and coffee. Maximize bed rest, especially for those patients who are not, uh, whose aneurysm are not yet secured. Alright, so once the patient arrives in your unit, either the stroke unit or ICU, we have to continue what the ED department has done and the stroke services have done. So we continue supporting the ADC. Maintain appropriate targets depending on the type of stroke. Strictly monitor the vital signs and your vital signs, and of course, the NIHSS. Assess for the these things and uh, ad address appropriate needs. So, address the blood sugar levels, address the temperature levels, and uh, coordinate with our medical team. We also have to do post surgical nursing care if applicable for our stroke patient. Fluids as well, post monitoring of intake and output uh, along with the physical exam to prevent dehydration. Provide as well as adequate nutrition, that's why we have to perform our swallow testing before, begin, before giving oral intake to our patient. We need this one so that we can prevent malnutrition and start adequate nutrition to our patient. So in terms of dysphagia screening, dysphagia screening is now being uh, part of one of the new recommendations in our clinical practice guidelines. So dysphagia screening before the patient begins eating, drinking, or receiving oral medications is now, is now part of the level one recommendation. And in terms of uh, what dysphagia screening should be used or who will do it, uh, well, it is um, the, the guidelines would say it is there is a reasonable for the status screening to be performed by a speech language pathologist or other trained healthcare provider. That is why uh, we implement uh, other other or we implement and adopt different method assessment tools. Uh, examples of this would be the water swallow testing, the gogging swallow screen, or the assist swallow screen, which is uh, the assist is being uh, being promoted by Angels, which is the test protocols, the fever sugar swallow protocols. So with this one, 
Um, we can adopt any protocols for depending on the resources of our hospital. So, for example, if uh, we can only color, uh, we get, we have only the resource which is uh, water and a laptop. This would be better. The water swallow testing, but for doggy swallows, swallow screen, it requires different food textures. For me, if this is better, the doggy swallow screen because it uh, it will have a sort of scoring system that that the nurses after assessment will have recommendations on the proper uh, type of nutrition that the patient might that the patient will be having. But not all hospitals have this type of or have this type of resources for them to cater different food uh, textures to be given to the patient. Now, if any of this bedside uh, assessment is being followed and if there if the patient was assessed to have a failed bedside assessment, there should be a referral system for a speech pathologist to perform for or maximum screen. And to continue, we should be doing other uh, other nursing interventions such as proper positioning to prevent uh, pressure injuries, screening and prevention of DVT, as well as involvement in rehabilitation. If if there's no formal uh, formal referral yet to the rehabilitation service, we can as nurses we can start a uh, passive uh, passive range of motion to our patients. But uh, any involvement in activities should be uh, collaborated with our medical teams. It's sort of uh, clearance so we can move the patient, move the patient to sit up on bed, sit and dangle, or maybe sit on the bedside chair. So this should be coordinated to our neurologist to ensure that the patient is stable enough to do uh, some rehabilitation activities. We have to also screen and assess for fall precautions and perform stroke education and quality monitoring. Aside from these stroke specific actions, we also have, of course, to perform our other ICU nursing care. And um, this is this one is emphasized earlier in the continuum of care. So we have to be active in and participate in stroke rehabilitation, pre uh, prevent the presence of contractures and other stroke complications. We also have to speak for depression and perform stroke education, not just for the patient, but as well as to the caregiver and family members of the patient. Because it is essential that they know as well what to do when they get told what, what symptoms to watch out for, what medications should the patient be taking at this time of the day, and so on. Okay? So, one of the questions that I, I'm getting from different uh, nurses in different stroke, uh, stroke hospitals is that what is really, what really is a stroke nurse in the Philippines? So there are different stroke nursing best practices that depend on the resources of the hospital. So in most centers, the, their stroke nurse is equivalent to that of the emergency nurse, wherein they perform activities in the pre hospital area and in the ED department. So they cover everything and then they assist the stroke team from until the administration of, of RTTA and admission to the stroke unit. Now, in other centers, they have this IC nurses that when they have to expedite or activate a stroke code, the ICU nurses or the acute stroke unit nurses are going to the ER to assist the emergency department and the stroke team to attend to the stroke patient. However, there might be some difficulties in terms of manpower capacities in uh, in, in different hospitals. So that's why it's one of the it's just a best practice. It's not really a guidelines on stroke nursing. So they continue care from the ED to IC discharge and then sometimes they go to the ED to assist the emergency nurse and the emergency team to expedite the stroke code. In a higher level, on the third column, it applies to a higher level of facilities. So applicable in certain comprehensive stroke facilities wherein their stroke nurses are considered as the primary responder. 
So once the EME suspects that the patient is having a stroke, they activate the stroke code and, and a stroke nurse is the primary responder, responder to that patient. And then the, the stroke, stroke nurse will be the one now to expedite uh, every movement of the, uh, the, the, the stroke patient will be having. So, uh, uh, the patient will go to the CT scan department or might be needing uh, essential medications as indicated by the stroke consultant. The person also oversees progress of care across all nursing units. So all stroke patients admitted in the hospital, they will be seen by a stroke nurse. So they, they will give daily, uh, daily stroke nursing education to the patient, so what are the goals for the day, what are the goals for the, what, what are expected activities for the day, what are the results to be to be weighted and to be discussed by the stroke neuro neurologist when the, the, the doctor arrives during round. So they, they, the, that nurse will be the one to, to oversee that one. And they are allowed to do advanced neurological assessment. Sometimes they are even uh, allowed to read imaging in case that the stroke, the neurology residents are not with them and they can immediately update the stroke consultant to have a rapid evaluation for the patient. And of course, uh, since this comprehensive stroke facilities are most likely to have uh, their stroke program certification, they have now to ensure that the stroke nurses will now have to ensure standards of stroke measures are being met, maintained, and sustained. Alright, so with that, uh, those are the, the best examples of, in, of stroke nursing in the Philippine setting. So I, uh, I would like to end this session as to this slide, which denotes that highly specialized nursing input is very paramount important in achieving optimal patient outcomes for our stroke patients. And having this highly specialized nursing will promote high quality of interdisciplinary care, providing a comprehensive, interactive, and holistic approach for both our stroke patients, for our stroke team, as well for the medical team, and of course for the rehabilitation. So a highly specialized nursing training is not just for the nurses, but as well as for our patient to have a good stroke patient outcomes and for us for the, the the benefit as well of the medical team in the hospital all right so these are my references and thank you for listening to my session